Hello one and all, Jesper here, and last time I did this video, I decided to throw a bunch of Japanese monsters into the north, and somewhat randomly assign one to each house for shits and giggles. That video was fun to make, so here's the next one, this time talking about the Westerlands instead. Now, if you haven't seen the first one, I'd recommend going to it as it lays out all the rules that I'll be using. With that said, there's one thing I'd like to change about the previous video. In it, I gave the Starks Alolan Ninetales because it was an ice canine. However, Scarlet and Violet have come out with a lot of dog Pokemon, and one in particular I think fits as a better mascot for House Stark. Which one is it? Obviously, Houndstone. Why? Because it's a very loyal boy, and it's fucking dead. And if that isn't the perfect symbol for House Stark, then I don't know what is. Enough about the North, though. Let me stop wasting your time, and let's just jump into the Westerlands, starting with, of course, the bosses of the region, House Lannister. Now I know what you're thinking, there's a lot of options we can go with in regards to what the best option for House Lannister is. Okay, it's fucking Pyroar. There are no other options unless we want to break my rule of no legendaries. Then we have the option of Sol Galeo or even Entei. And if anyone tells me that Entei is a dog, you can go fuck yourself. He is part of the three legendary beasts, not legendary dogs. In fact, a lion was part of the inspiration of creating him. Not that it matters, Pyroar is clearly the only real option I have. So, on to the next one. House Krakal. Alrighty, looking at the sigil, we see the offspring of a zebra and a boar. So what we need is to get Zebstrika to have some fun with Grumpig and see what comes out. Honestly, I wish I could just give them my original Pokemon Toxwine. I had Mal Solo make it as a test before I took him on as a thumbnail artist. Really happy with how it turned out. Either way, the sigil is clearly more pig than zebra and Pokemon does not have a lot of options in the pig department. The best one is probably Embor. It has the boar part, and it being a big fighting type fits the general description of House Krakal being big boned and strong individuals. Speaking of big bone, the next house probably has a member with the biggest bones, House Clegane. With three sprinting hounds, we are obviously going to go the canine route. However, what canine would fit best is hard to say. The first Pokemon that came to my mind is Houndoom a ferocious dark fire Pokemon that matches the brutality and ferocity that House Clegane is famous for. Next we have Mighty Eno, who I can best describe as diet normal version of Houndoom. Zoroark also seems like a decent option, and even Lucario, though they are bipedal doggos. I have to go with Houndoom. At the end of the day, I can just picture them fitting onto the sigil better than pretty much any other option. Well, I let House Forrester make an appearance in the last video, so I should probably let Pain make a showing as well. But good god, what am I going to do with this? Gold coins on a purple and white checkerboard. So a Pokemon that has a strong correlation with money. Well, Persian and Alolan Persian can learn Payday, so that helps. Berserker as well, which is my favorite of the versions we have, though I admit it doesn't quite fit the right vibe. I guess I gotta go with... Money, 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 money! Never mind. This stripped out, gumby looking fuck is the perfect choice for House Pain. Moving on to House Lefford. And damn it. The sigil is just a big pile of gold. Fuck. Well, they also own a castle called the Golden Tooth, so maybe a Pokemon that looks like they could take a bite out of people? Perserker. It knows payday, so it's got the money aspect, and he looks like he could bite through a steel door. Now we have House Brax, and this shit is easy, because there are only three unicorn Pokemon, that being Rapidash, Galarian Rapidash, and Keldeo. Keldeo is a legendary that nobody cares about, so we can kick his ass to the curb, and Galarian Rapidash fits the color scheme of the sigil much better. Easy pick. Why can't all the houses be this nice? House Leiden is up to bat, and oh boy, this is even easier than Brax. Obstacoon fits the color scheme well enough, though the badger on the sigil is a bit pale for my liking. But hey, at least now we know that if the nobility of Westeros could listen to more modern music, that these guys would be fans of Kiss. We're getting close to the end, and we are now on House Serret. And, wow, I'm kind of surprised we don't have a peacock Pokemon. Maybe they're saving it for a Pokemon region inspired by India, but either way, Looks like I'll need to make some sacrifices in this case. Chatot seems like an option. Not a good option, but an option. And the same with Zatu, though I'm really only mentioning them because they are quite colorful Pokemon. 
Unpheasant is boring as sin, but there is a similarity that the males look far more fabulous than the female version, just like real peacocks. However, I think I'm going to go with Sigilith. Why is my reasoning? I don't have one. It's colorful, and if no bird is going to be a peacock, I might as well go with the most fucked up bird, shouldn't I? House Westerling is here now, and honestly, I wish I could just give them a shiny shelter and be done with it. But I already mentioned in the last video, the Pokemon must be fully evolved. So I have to look at other hard-shelled Pokemons. The obvious one would be Shelter's evolution, Cloyster. You know, the one that looks like a vagina. I wonder, can I specifically pick the Gen 1 version of Cloyster? It fits so much better. Ah, fuck it. It's my video, so I can do what I want. Now, Sweet House Plum is strutting on in, and as far as I'm aware, there are no Pokemon based off of Plum. Yet, we do have other very fruity Pokemon to look into. Or, really, only two, because in the fruit Pokemon category, there are only four Pokemon. Three of them belong to the Tsarina line, so only Tsarina counts, and Tropius. They literally have a Pokemon named Cherubi that looks like cherries, and it does not count as a fruit Pokemon? Not that it matters, as I naturally went through all the grass Pokemon, and at the end of the day, I felt like Serena was the best fit because it's got damn THICK purple thighs. And that is all the justification I need to choose her over all the lesser options. And last, but most certainly least, House Swift. With the beautiful blue cock as the sigil, I have to say, there are no great options. But there is one Pokemon based off a chicken we could use, and that is Blaziken. Though, let's be honest, it's not exactly a similar style. Galarian Zapdos isn't a terrible option, and its shiny form at least matches the background, kind of. But I think it'd be safer to go with a blue bird to substitute for this sigil, or as close as we can get. Now, we do have options. Honchkrow didn't seem like the worst choice you could make, and Cremorant was high on my list because it looks just as derpy as the chicken sigil. Yet, in the end, I went with Altaria. It's blue skin because the white stuff would be the feathers right so the blue part that's its skin but those dangly things at the top there is no way those are just flaps of skin is it Ugh. either way this is my choice though i admit most of my motivation was i was feeling all the pokemon i've been picking have been quite underwhelming so i need to get this region at least one decent pokemon with that, we can now do everyone's favorite part of the video, trying to make a decent team with these Pokemon. Obviously, we have to start with Pyroar and build up around him. The first choice that came to my mind as a good option was Goldengo, or Goldio, however you fucking pronounce it. Steel Ghost is a pretty good type, and his unique attack, Make It Rain, is pretty damn powerful itself. Now, with these two, let's look at the chinks in our armor and see how well we can cover those up. Right. Now, ground type seems to be our kryptonite, as both Pyroar and Goldilocks are weak to it. So how about a flying Pokemon, since they are immune to it? We only have two options in that case, with Sigilyph and Altaria. I'll pick Altaria due to her having the dragon type, which, as far as I'm aware, is one of the best types in the game. I think I remember hearing that it is the best offensive type. Maybe fairies kind of replaced it. The next more pressing weakness is Dark, and we have a few options in that regard. Ambor, Obstagoon, and Houndoom. All of them share a type with Pyroar, so sadly no matter who we pick, we are making Pyroar less critical to our team than he already is. But of the three options, Ambor seems like the best one. Fire Fighting is a pretty damn good offensive type combo. Why else would they use that type combo for three starters in a row? The last type we should probably look to deal with is Electric. None of our Pokemon are weak against it, but none of them are strong against it either. So adding Serena to the team just in case doesn't strike me as the worst idea I've ever come up with. And just like that, with 5 Pokemon, we have an option no matter what kind of Pokemon our enemy throws at us. With that said, Ground still kinda scares me. It's a really good offensive type and half our team is weak to it right now. So I'm going to double up to make sure we have as many options as possible to deal with it. And so I will throw on Sigilyph as the final addition, which does also make Rock type a bit scary, but let's be honest, Rock is just a mid typing. So what do you think? Was there a Westerlands house that you feel like I should have mentioned but didn't? Is there a Pokemon that would have been a better thematical pick? Was the final team I put together at the end actually just shit? Pretty sure it is because I've never heard anything good about Pyroar. I'd love to hear all your thoughts in the comments down below. 
Until then, stay safe, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.